Ephesians 4. We just like to see something in verses 17 and 18. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. The Greek word for ignorance there is exactly the same Greek word that Peter used to talk about ignorance. But, but uh, Paul takes us a step further than Peter did. Paul goes on to say one more thing. He says that all of this vanity of mind and darkened understanding, what understanding is, usual word translated mind, wrong thinking resulting in a life deprived, a life which is not filled with God. They're alienated from the life of God. It's no life of God showing forth the glory of God out of their lives. They're ignorant. They don't know. But then Paul goes on to say that this is because of the blindness of their heart. So Paul takes us deeper than Peter. Paul penetrates here beneath this vain mind, this futile mind, this darkened understanding, this willful ignorance, and he says all of this wrong thinking is rooted in the blindness of the heart. And that same word translated blindness is translated hardness. In Mark 3, 5, when Jesus looked round about on them with anger, being grieved for the hardness, the blindness of their heart. Beneath this wrong thinking, there is another problem. Here is the deepest disease that infects everything else. Our mental rejection of certain truths that we find un, uh, not palatable is rooted in our hardness of heart. A hard and impenitent heart, Paul calls it. So we have this mind that doesn't like to accept the truth about God and that sort of rejecting mind that suppresses the truth and holds it down in unrighteousness, Paul says in Romans 1. All that is fed, it's fed, it's fed by a hard heart. Our minds are often blind to the wonder of Christ because our hearts are not submissive to his authority. Seeing God's truth, hearing God's voice is a heart matter. Psalm 95, Hebrews 3, Hebrews 3, quote Psalm 95, Today, if you'll hear his voice, harden not your heart. And so we really have got two problems here. The mind and a heart. Mind, blind mind, blind eyes and a hard heart. And so really what we do need is a, a twofold, a dual work of the ministry of the Spirit of God. Now it's fairly obvious from 2 Corinthians 3.18 that the renewing of the mind is a work of the Holy Spirit. But there's one other scripture that would confirm that. The only other place in the New Testament where the Greek word for renewing is repeated, and a kainois, is Titus 3.5, which most of you would know, it says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Now that's talking about salvation. The ministry of the Holy Ghost, the ministry of the Holy Spirit is essential in salvation. You don't get saved without it. Unless you're born again by the Spirit of God, you're not born again. The ministry of the Spirit of God is essential in salvation, in regeneration, Titus 3.5. But the same Holy Spirit's ministry is just as essential in sanctification, 2 Corinthians 3.18. It's a ministry of the Spirit of God. And again, if you're not born again by the Spirit of God, there is no salvation. Unless the Spirit of God is involved in our sanctification, then sanctification won't happen. 
Let's come back to 2 Corinthians 3.18. If you want to turn in your Bible or look on the screen. But we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord were changed into the same image. From glory to glory even as by the Spirit of the Lord. The, the key to a transformed mind or a transformed life is the steady gaze of the soul upon the glory of Christ. Which is in contrast to the Jews of Moses' day and today. Just look at verse 14, 2 Corinthians 3, 14. But their minds were blinded. For until this day there remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. But even unto this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their hearts. Nevertheless, when it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. And just as unsaved Jews or unsaved anyone needs to turn to the Lord in order for them to be able to see. So too for us there needs to be a turning towards the Lord, an inclining of our hearts towards the Lord if we hope to, to see and gaze upon the glory of Christ. There needs to be a turning towards the Lord. Praying that the Holy Spirit would open our eyes. Verse 14, the eyes of our mind. Verse 15, the eyes of our heart. Chapter 4, verse 4 talks about blind minds. Verse 6 talks about blind heart. And in that context there, it's the devil who does it. The God of this world who keeps unsaved people blind. So they don't see the glory of Christ and get saved. But I tell you what, it is the same devil who hates unsaved people seeing the glory of Christ, who hates Christians seeing the glory of Christ and being sanctified. It's the same devil. There's a huge spiritual battle going on right at this point. When we sit down to open our Bibles and read, we have our mind that needs a lot of help and our hearts that are hard and the devil loves to have it so. And that's why we need to be praying for the ministry of the Spirit of God to open our eyes and be praying, show me thy glory. Open my eyes, help me to see, show me thy glory. And sometimes something like that does happen and our eyes are wonderfully open to the truth about God in his word and guess what? Nothing happens because the heart is still hard. The heart needs to be softened. The heart needs to be humbled. Talking about the new covenant and writing upon our hearts in the same context we talk about taking out the heart of stone and having a heart of flesh, soft. And that's why we need a, a dual ministry, a twofold ministry of the Holy Spirit, praying that, that the Holy Spirit would somehow enable the truth about Christ to come before our eyes. Whether it is when we read our Bibles by ourselves praying, Lord, please, may the truth and the glory of you and Christ come before my eyes. Or when we go to church, we sit in the pew, Lord, may the preacher please say something. May the Spirit of God take his words and present the glory of Christ to my eyes. Or maybe we're just praying that throughout the day, perhaps we're meeting with Christian friends, Lord, may there be some word in their mouth which comes to me with the blessing of God, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, presenting the glory of Christ before my face. We need to be praying like that. But at the same time, praying that there would be this outward ministry of the Holy Spirit, bringing it to our face. We also need to be praying that there would be this inward ministry of the Holy Spirit, doing something to our heart, so that when that glorious truth is presented, it does penetrate this hard, cold heart of mine. Now James talks about this. He says that we need to receive with meekness that implanted seed of the Word of God so that it penetrates and brings forth fruit. In the same chapter, James says, Whosoever looketh into the perfect law of liberty. It's interesting the word that he used for looketh there. It's the same word used in the Gospels to describe the action of the disciples when they ran to the tomb and the word translated there is and stooping down they looked in. Stooping down they looked in. 
Whoso looketh into the... Whoso stoops down to look. This is, the, this is a humble posture. Bending over, humbly kneeling over the opened word of God. So we need the Holy Spirit to help us to, to see truth and working within our hearts. Now Pastor West has already mentioned that you know, this whole process of sanctification, we've emphasised the fact that it's, it's a work of the Spirit of God, we need to be praying for it, but we ourselves are not inactive in this process. There are things that we need to do. We need to be the ones getting into the book. We need to be the ones who plough up the fallow ground by the parable of the sower. There's, there's, there's wayside soil that needs ploughing. Don't expect someone else to do that for you. And there are some rocks there that need to be gotten rid of and there are some weeds that need to be pulled out. We're the ones that need to repent and praying all the while that the Holy Spirit would open our eyes and soften our hearts. What do we do then in obedience to Romans 12 2, where the command is don't be conformed to the world, be transformed. How do we obey that? Well, we need to join with the Holy Spirit in his precious and all-important work. We need to pursue Christ-exalting truth and at the same time be praying for truth embracing humility. Listen to rich exposition about the glory of Christ. Read your Bible from cover to cover often praying that God would reveal his glorious self to you. Read and ponder Bible saturated Christ exalted writings of great spiritual men and women. Pastor West has already mentioned the Puritans. Get into the habit of meditating on the perfections of Christ. Do all of that and at the same time be praying, be praying, be praying that the Holy Spirit would renew your mind and soften the heart that you may desire and approve the will of God so that all of our life becomes worship to the glory of Christ. Amen. Let's pray. Gracious God and Heavenly Father, again we, we thank you for the, the Word of God. Lord, we, we wouldn't know how to address things if it wasn't for your Word. Lord, we would be completely at sea. We wouldn't make any progress at all. But uh, Lord, thank you that you've given us your word. A lamp to our feet. A light to our path. Lord, open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy law. Lord, you, ha you have to do that. The Holy Spirit needs to do that for us. Lord, a part of our problem is our minds are so dull, our hearts are so hard. Lord, we can read wonderful truth and it has no impact upon us whatsoever we just gloss over we get to the end of our reading we tick it off for the day Lord there is another way so Lord please again please work in our hearts by your Holy Spirit continue to do the good work that you've begun we ask it in Jesus name Amen